What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Logic Bots, and it's been a bit since we played Logic Bots, we've been getting a little bit caught up with, you know, the scrap mechanic updates, but we're back in Logic Bots, and we're continuing the career mode in the contractor section, and we're on, we did the grass cutting, and of course the uh, vacuum cleaning, making the good old Roomba, but we're now we're on to the single motor challenge, and maybe hopefully into the balance beam as well, we'll see how long this takes. So for the single motor challenge, I believe what that means is we only have a, a motor that goes forward, so we can't can't have the traditional tank steering like we've been doing so build a logic bot that can follow the black line however your logic block can only have one motor to complete the task complete the level without using any motor joints or stepper arms okay the level pretty much straightforward just has to follow a line nothing really to it but the the difference is now the frame only has a single motor so we're not going to be able to oh that is a very small frame but anyways we're not going to be able to actually do the left right tank steering like we normally do what if we use the pistons as some sort of a brake and make it so that the piston pushes into the ground and slows the vehicle down when you want it to go in that particular direction. So we have one piston on either side, or we can actually do it with right angle hydraulic pistons, and I'll just push this down and drag it on the one side, and I think that will do it, and then it'll just, that way we don't have to use these. I mean, obviously, if we're using the motor joint or the stepper arm, we just have the sensor say, okay, when you pick up this sensor, go this way, and you pick up that sensor, go that way. It's like using a controller and scrap mechanic. But let's do it with these right angle pistons. This is going to be a, a terrible idea. But this this might actually work. You know what? This might actually work, right? And then we'll just, uh, you know, put some free wheels on the front. Okay, so this won't actually have any sort of steering. Because, you know, we can just do this with caster balls. Why not, right? Like, just really, really cheesy. I mean, so we won't have any steering, right? But assuming these brakes will work... Um, okay, we're gonna need some weight on the front. Assuming the brakes will work, though, we might actually be able to, to do this whole thing. Okay, so what can we put for weight on the front? Okay, perfect. So that should keep those wheels down. Excellent. This is looking good. Okay, and now we'll just program the whole thing. So, oh, wait, we need some sensors. Hold on. Need some sensors. Line sensor. This should work. No problem. I mean, assuming we can get the braking mechanism to work, I think this is gonna be fantastic. Okay, so we'll call this left... And I mean, it should be relatively easy and not really require too much on the circuit. Okay, so here we go. So we got the single stepper motor frame. We actually need a circuit extension because we can't place anything anywhere, apparently. All right, so circuit board extension. There we go. So we have some room for some stuff. Uh, and actually, the only thing we really need in that is a switch to turn everything on. So switch, to turn the motor on. We're not going to reverse the direction. Okay, and then we've got left and right pistons on this side and left and right sensors so if we pick up the left sensor that means we've seen the line on the left and we need to turn to the left so we're going to activate the left brake and if we see the right actually we'll just change the wire color so this is the ultimate steering robot that doesn't actually use any steering i mean using steering would be super awesome okay do they I mean, the motor's on. Do the wheels not spin? All right, so instead of having the whole bar come down, we'll just have the bar go flat. And I think when this gets the wall, then we'll just put like a little piece on the end of it. And that way we can control. Yeah, see, it doesn't It doesn't have enough. I think we're going to need... Yeah, see, it doesn't have enough. Okay, it doesn't have enough time. So we're going to need more sensors. Okay, and then we'll have it on like an OR gate system. So if either of the two sensors, so this will be uh, another sensor on the left, and this will be another sensor on the right, I believe. Correct. And then we'll put these through some OR gates. All right, and we'll just have this all set up here just so we can easily um, give the piston enough time to get down into position. I mean, the other option, I guess, is have it on a knot system so the piston's always down and the whole thing's dragging, and then it'll raise the piston up. But I'd prefer to do it with a, with a brake. Okay, that, that completely lifts it off the ground. I mean, it, even if these brakes actually work, I have a feeling these brakes aren't going to work. Okay, no, that was, that was good. That was great. All right, you know what? I can't figure out how to do this with the brakes. So instead, we're going to go and we're going to do this the proper way. We're going to make a stepper motor. We're going to use a, a proper motor joint and have the whole front axle swing. And then that way we can actually do everything a little bit easier. So here we go. We're going to put a motor joint on it. I know we're not supposed to use the motor joint, but you know what? We're, I, I want to beat this level, and it's so much easier to do with the motor joint. So there we go. So there's the motor joint, and then we just put a box section across. 
problem solved. Okay, and then we'll just manipulate this based on some sensor positions, which we'll pick up here at the back, I guess. I don't, I don't know if this is, we probably have to pick these up at the front. But we'll try it here at the back. If we have to move the sensors, we'll move the sensors. All right, this is gonna be really, really easy now, I think. Circuit board, okay, motor is always on. That is true still. The motor joint takes an angle. We give it an angle between negative 90 and 90 degrees. Now, I don't know which is which, but it's not really a big deal. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two static values. One will be for the one direction and one will be for the other. I don't know which is which, 30 degrees, negative 30 degrees. We can always change them later. So one will be with the right sensor and one will be with the left. So basically, if the right sensor is activated, we need to give it this angle. And if the left sensor is activated, we need to give it that angle. So all we need to do is actually use a single gate called a selective addition gate. And this is kind of a cool gate. And if this works the way, I've never used it before, but if it works the way I think it should, it says add numbers together that are enabled by their Boolean inputs. So all we need to do is add negative 30 and 30 together and feed the output of this to the motor joint input and have the two sensors feed into this. And if I've done this correctly, this should be really, really easy. So if the right sensor is activated, it'll add negative 30 degrees to the motor joint position. And if the left sensor is activated, then it'll add 30 degrees to the motor joint position. So if one sensor picks up the line, it should add the correct angle and then move the motor to that position. This is, I, I think this is how this works. I'm not sure. So these are the Boolean conditions, just checking the sensor. And if those conditions are true, then it adds the numbers. So I, I'm pretty sure this is all we need to do. We'll find out what happens when we hit the line here. And absolutely nothing. Okay, no, that's that's good. Oh, I think I just actually heard this hooked up wrong. I think the numbers go into the yellow side and I think the Boolean gates go into the red side. I'm pretty sure that's all it was. So you can see there's different color codings. Green creates something because red is Boolean here. Yellow is a number you can see. We've got the input is a yellow. So I think, I think that's where I screwed up. This should fix it. And then of course we'll have to adjust it. So what happens there? It goes the wrong way. Okay, so we've got the sensors hooked up backwards. So that's fine. We'll just reverse this. So this will be 30. And this will just be negative 30. And now this should steer. And we can adjust the angle if we need to. But this should steer now as it picks up the line. You can see they're perfect steering. Oh, too much. We'll move the sensors up to the front here. So let's just put them right on the front bar. And we should actually be able to move them without having too much issue with the circuitry. The circuitry should all stay. So there we go. All right. Yeah, that's how you have to do it. See, there we go. Now it hugs the line. Perfect. Look at that. That is a steering car robot. A little bit long, but now we're actually making cars. And see, this is why they don't want you to use the motor joints. See, if you do with brakes, it's obviously going to be much more difficult. Let's see how this handles the zigzag section. Hopefully it can do it. There we go. Look at that. Uh-oh. Oh, that was close. A little bit aggressive but i mean just really really oh oh boy stop 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 shaking come on you can do it really really cool robot this is uh overcompensating and undercomp there we go back on the nice turn and it should do it in the 45 seconds really really cool oh no it's not gonna do it in the 45 seconds man it's a little slow wow only one achievement i bet you we can actually make that better just by increasing these angles i bet you if we go 60 degrees and negative 60 it'll actually respond better to the lines and we'll get a faster time this is just my crazy hunch but i think it'll work i think the the higher angle you give it uh the better it is because now you can see as that sensor picks it up it, it moves more and gets it back on course quicker so i think in this section where it's really tight this is where it's gonna make the big improvement. We'll see here what it does. All right, come on, turn. Oh, yeah, see how see how much faster that is to get back on course? Oh, or get completely off course, you know what, maybe not. I wanna get that 45 second achievement. I mean, if we're not gonna get budget and we're not gonna get any of the other achievements, I gotta at least get the 45 second achievement just to at least, you know, prove that we're able to do something. I mean, maybe not. If we don't get it this time, we'll just go on to the balance view. That's good. It's It got back on course pretty quick there. Not too much overcorrection. Same here. Look, it's much faster time just by changing it by 5 degrees. And we should get the time achievement. Here we go. Boom. Awesome. 
There we go. Not completely useless. What an awesome challenge. Really cool to actually make like a steering robot. I mean, in Scrap Mechanic, you do the same thing, obviously just using a controller. We're going to go on to the balance beam and hopefully make a balance beam. And then of course, everything else is like walking. So just really crazy stuff. But we're going to try doing the balance beam robot and see if we can do this. Uh, so the balance beam is really simple. You have to build a logic bot that can cross narrow balance beams. I mean, it's, you know, 28 seconds, robot cost, yada, yada, yada without using any wide pneumatic wheels and no more than three medium pneumatic wheels. Okay, so we gotta use three medium wheels. Those are the balance beams. Great, so we have to make something that can really just, I mean, go not fall off the edge. We'll make a tricycle, a really narrow tricycle. This actually might be perfect. Let's, let's do this. Let's make a narrow tricycle. Okay, we got the motor joint, perfect. So let's add the circuit board here. Is there a smaller circuit board extension? We don't need a big one. No, five by five. Okay, let's go three by three. Put that right in the middle. It's gonna be great. So that'll be the front wheel. This is gonna be sweet. This is gonna be like the best vehicle I think I've ever made in this game. Okay, so we've got this epic tricycle and then we'll put a wheel on the front just like that. That'll be our steering wheel. I, I hope this is small enough to fit on the balance beam. I mean, I really don't know. Let's, you know what? Let's just try it with like an on switch. What happens if we just turn it on? Is it gonna even make it off the balance beam? I hope it's narrow enough. Oh my God, that's not narrow enough? Wow, it needs to be narrower than that. We'll take all this stuff, we'll just move it for now, and then we'll just move this. i will rotate it 90 degrees, right? There we go, and then we'll move this and put it back up front. Okay, so that should be super narrow now. All right, here we go. So now it's a super, super narrow trike. We've narrowed that motor. Is that actually narrow enough? Okay, we have to actually make it to the edge there, guys. Let's, let's move this part over a little bit more here so the wheel is relatively centered. All right, can we... We're not going to go to the edge. We're just going to put sensors that look down, basically. Just like before, we're going to have these laser rangers. The only difference is uh, we're going to have two sets of sort of static value. So we're gonna have a static value fed into a selective addition, of course, again, and uh, this will be 50 and negative 50, just like we did last time. And these will feed into the same thing. Uh, we'll just change the wire color, actually change this to yellow. Right, and we'll feed the top one into the top one and the bottom one into the bottom one. And then for the Boolean conditions, we're just gonna compare them against the static value. So we're gonna go uh, if the right is greater than some value and the left is greater than some value, then that means you've gone off the edge. I, I think like probably 0 0.2 meters is probably enough. And then that means of course you've gone off the edge and you have to steer in the appropriate direction. So if we're greater and then we'll just go like this and I'm assuming these are the right directions. If not, we'll just, uh, we'll just change this. And then this of course will send the output and this whole system should work. It'll drive and it'll steer the tricycle and hopefully it's narrow enough to make it across the balance beam. So uh, we're gonna drive right off the edge, of course. Okay, so at least it steers correctly. We just need to reposition the sensors in a better way. All right, hopefully this is good. Oh, it did it. It did the first part. Is it gonna stay on for the next part? No, it's, it's, it's too, it's too, it needs to be even, even further forward. All right, this should be enough hopefully to steer our way to victory. Here we go, turn, turn. Okay, good, good. Barely fitting on that. This balance beam's the same size, right? They're not any different. Oh, perfect, it just hugs that corner. Is it not enough? Oh no, it is, it is, okay, good. Oh, it's so close. All right, so after a bit of testing, I think we've got a little bit of a working design. I did have to do a few changes, so uh, we put two single motors on the back to make it even narrower instead of this section. So the wheels are even closer together just to fit on the balance beams. Kind of extended these forward to have some, uh, you know, ability to play with the sensor position a little bit. And then, of course, changed a few things in the circuit. So one thing that was a problem is that if it drove too fast off the edge of the course, uh, you know, if it drove too fast off the corner, both sensors would go off. So we just added a little bit of a circuit here, which says if both sensors are activated, then reverse the motors. So it'll actually reverse the whole direction of the creation. So I think this should work now. It should make it across the balance beam. It senses that. It steers. It's kind of lopsided in the back here, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. All right, so we're going, you see there, turning perfectly. 
I also increased this motor to go to full 90 degrees. It doesn't really matter because when the sensor goes back onto the beam part, it just stops turning anyway. So here we go. It's going to drive off. You can see there. So it's reversing so it doesn't drive off the edge. And oh, no, still too much. Okay, so we just got to adjust our sensors a little bit, move them a little bit back towards our wheel, a little bit closer together, I think. Let's see if this will do it. I really hope this will because I've, I've spent way too much time just trying to find adjust the sensors. And I, I mean, the only other way to do this and have it balanced properly would be to do a whole gravity sensor system and have it when it starts to fall, it adjusts itself with some sort of a counterweight. But I think this will do it. So if we can make it around the death corner, it's this corner and this corner that really kill it. So here we go. We got to The sensors have to be just right so that this wheel doesn't slip off. Come on, make that corner. There we go. Holy cow, that's so close. All right, and then it's got to make it through this corner so this wheel doesn't have to slip off. Just make the corner. Oh my goodness, it looks like it's... Oh, is it going to do it? <gasps> Come on, you could do it. Stay, stay, stay. Yes! Oh, 44 seconds. We did not get the time achievement because of that stupid corner, but that's okay. We did get the special achievement for only using three wheels. My goodness, what an amazing challenge. I can't believe we made a single motor steering mechanism and then used that same steering mechanism to do the balance beam and make this super epic tricycle. Look at that tricycle. This is like the ultimate the ultimate in robot technology but anyways guys make sure if you do like this series let me know in the comments down below and of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button we're almost done i think the fourth section of logic bots and then there's one more section after that i'm super super excited i love this game i love how the puzzles are kind of challenging a little bit frustrating to have to keep trying to do the same puzzle sort of technique over and over again but really cool to try and get some of these achievements and maybe i'll go back and try and do some of the time achievements and other things as well but make sure you let me know what you think in the comments down below and as always i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time